Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. From the Holy Gospel, St. Luke 10, Jesus said to the 72, Heal the sick and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. If you're wondering from where the theme for this sermon comes, all you have to do is look at the parable of the Good Samaritan, which is recorded later in St. Luke 10, after our text. The Good Samaritan went to the man stripped and beaten on the side of the road and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Oil soothed, wine disinfected. My friends, that's exactly what happens when the kingdom of God comes to us, sin sick and broken bodily. It heals, it soothes, it disinfects. As you heard today, we observe the day of St. Luke, who is described as a physician in Scripture and who often accompanied St. Paul on his missionary journeys. Now we know that St. Paul had a recurring illness. Exactly what it may have been, we don't know for sure. It might have been malaria. But St. Paul calls it a thorn in the flesh. St. Luke, as a physician, would have nursed St. Paul back to health. When you read St. Luke's Gospel, you can't help but notice the emphasis he places on the healings that Jesus performed. In addition, St. Luke would have been instrumental on those missionary journeys, adding to St. Paul's proclamation of the Gospel with tangible concern for the sick and suffering. You see, it was a both and. The healing of the Gospel and the healing of physical ailments. Heralding the gospel never ignores the physical needs of those who suffer. Oil and wine address both spiritual and physical healing. As we know from his gospel and the book of Acts, St. Luke was a scholar who searched carefully to give accurate accounts both about Jesus and the early church. He told most excellent Theophilus at the beginning of his gospel that it seemed good to St. Luke, having followed all things closely for some time past, to write an orderly account for Theophilus, that he could have certainty concerning the things he had been taught. Jesus said, Heal the sick and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. Jesus makes that kingdom come. But what does that mean for you and me? It means that today's world would be different if God's reign were recognized by everyone. There would not be 12 wars waging around the world every day. There's enough food to feed everyone, but 30,000 people would not die of malnutrition every day. Our cities would not be segregated, and our neighborhoods would not be riddled with violence. Our businesses and governments would be run with integrity. In other words, our society would be disinfected. There would be soothing oil that our broken society needs today. The kingdom of God disinfects because it cleanses the deadly wounds of sin, which is the cause of sin's sick and bodily broken lives. The oil of the gospel soothes comforts and heals those deadly wounds. The kingdom of God is a reality because Jesus is here 
the one who began his reign from a cross to embrace a fallen humanity in the world. From the cross, he embraced each and every harassed and helpless sheep with compassion, willingly laying down his life for them. In this way, he reversed the curse and consequence of sin in Genesis 3, and he prepared the way for each to receive the oil and wine of healing. A pastor once related how after an evening worship service, he received a telephone call from his mother telling him that his grandfather was dying. At the hospital, the children and grandchildren had gathered. The pastor stood by his grandfather's bedside, took out the anointing oil that he carried with him, and anointed his grandfather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Then he laid his hands on him and he prayed for him. O oh God, we give you thanks and praise. We commit him to your love and care at this very moment. We pray that you would hold him in the palm of your hand, this man who is a sheep of your flock, a sinner of your redeeming. Lord, we give him to you as you gave him to us. In your perfect time, O oh God, we pray that you would welcome him into the arms of your love, that you would wash him clean and make him new, that you would allow him to enter your kingdom and see the things of which we only dream on this side of eternity. We give him to you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As he ended that prayer, his uncle, who was an EMT, and holding his grandfather's hand on the other side of the bed, said, Adam, right as you were praying, Dad breathed his last. God had welcomed him home. The family sat there in the hospital room for another hour. They talked, told stories, prayed, laughed, read the Bible, and cried. They were able to celebrate because they had the sure and certain hope of the kingdom of God and its healing. Of course, we know that physical healing does not always come on this side of the grave, but it does come in God's perfect time. Forgiven and living in eternity, the perfect healing of body and soul becomes a permanent reality. It is as St. John revealed. God will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. We have often prayed, thy kingdom come. You and I have to realize that God often uses us to help his kingdom come. While we may not have been given the power to heal those physically ill, remember that power has been worked through some, we do have the power of the gospel that brings the oil of healing to sin-sick lives and helps people to receive the disinfecting wine of forgiveness so that they can be part of the kingdom now and be prepared to enter the kingdom of glory. In other words, you and I have to make it clear, both by our conversation and the way we live, that the kingdom of God is real and that it trumps every kingdom on earth. The kingdom of God is here and now, and it transcends time and lives on in eternity. No other kingdom can make that claim. 
That means that the disinfecting wine is necessary, and soothing oil brings the sure and confident hope that dispels the futility of our sin-weary lives. In a hopeless and weary world that doubts that it has a future, you and I must proclaim that the kingdom of God has come near, that healing is possible. We have to make it clear to others that this kingdom is embodied in Jesus Christ, who is Savior. Hopelessness is changed into certainty here in Jesus. Weariness is replaced with rest here in Jesus. Where there was no future, now there is an eternity of health and wholeness in Jesus. This is the certainty that St. Luke proclaimed in Jesus. Jesus. Amen. We continue with the Nicene Creed at page 158. 